Welcome to Boat Innovation. We would like to show you our integration lab today. This is our reception. What we do here, we test the deploy lift functionality. Um, what we do is uh, run the product in cycles. cycles. But mainly what we do in this station, we run lift deploy, lift deploy, and do tens of thousands of cycles. We let it run weekends, we let it run at night, we just let it run. And at this point, and for a few months, nothing breaks. So, um, and obviously we went through a process of making everything as rigid as it can be, as rigid as it is today. I'll stop it, and I'll show you the, I'll show you the control. So the control is very simple. If you want to lift the product, you press lift. Mm -hmm. If you want to deploy to dock level, you just press dock deploy. And it will deploy, and it will stop at dock level. And you'll see it stopping by itself. If you want to lift, you press lift, and it will lift all the way. And then if you would like to deploy to rub rail mm -hmm. level, you just press rub rail. <coughs> you press rub rail, it goes to rub rail level. It stops. Very simple. You would like to stop, you have an option to stop. You want to do small adjustments. To do small adjustments, you have, you have hold lift and hold deploy. Okay. So hold, hold lift and hold deploy, as the name suggests. You hold, as long as you hold, it will lift. When you remove your finger, it will stop. Right. You press, hold, it will lift, and it will stop. Very simple. Um, you have a small picture here of the boat, starboard and port. And the whole configuration is, I'll show you the configuration. Um, the software recognizes the fenders. And you need to assign the fender to its location. The fender to its location. Very simple. So basically, you have to do three things. Assign the fender to its location. Tell us what is the height of the rail from the dock. And tell us what the, the height of the rail from the rub rail. It's in inches. You enter those two numbers, everything else is practically automatic. Um, in the lab here, we have about uh, 20 automatic fenders, but this tablet controls only two. In order to achieve that, we have to recognize or we have to give username and password for each automatic fender. And the idea is we would like to make it very, very, very easy for the customer. In order to make it very easy for the customer, we had to create some level of sophistication. So, each one of the automatic fenders has what is called MAC ID. Each one of the users have a username and password, and username and passwords are associated with MAC IDs. This way, my tablet can control only these two. Your tablet can control only yours. One side benefit for it is, if they are stolen, they are not operational. You cannot operate them unless we provide you with a username and password. Which is still the too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is normally your phone, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, most yeah. people use their phone, yeah. so nobody will steal their phone. Mm -hmm. Connecting to the boat is very simple. It's two clamps, six bolts. It takes about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. No electrical connection, and you do not need to call a professional. No. This is the automatic fender. Mm -hmm. It's totally independent. So basically, it has a solar cell and a battery, a pretty large battery. The battery is charged from the solar cell, mm -hmm. so there's no need to connect it to the power of the boat. The whole control is via wireless from your mobile device or phone. Again, no need to connect to the boat what, electrically. What is, the, uh, what is the signal distance? It's very far. It's, it's Bluetooth. It's the best Bluetooth. It's okay. Bluetooth 4 right now. So if you have a big boat. No problem. And your device is in the stern, and the fenders are in the front. No problem. It'll, it'll read and it'll... Yes, it'll, it'll, it'll. we tested this quite a few times.
The next thing is the user can change, the customer can change uh, password. And you can send us uh, feedback. About things you would like us to change, things which are working suggestions well, and so just suggestions forth. and so forth. Uh -huh. There are two more screens, which are basically for us only. One screen is the service tools. Here we define everything about the product. So the product is pretty sophisticated. We can define what is the maximum current it will allow to pull Defender, what is the maximum current it will allow to deploy Defender. So all these parameters are obviously predefined, but we can change them on the fly. We can monitor anything about the product. So what you can see is the Mac ID of each of the products. Mm -hmm. You see the software version. This is the embedded software version. There's yeah. software inside of each of them. Mm -hmm. So this is the embedded software version. You can see the voltage of each of them. You can see the temperature of each of them, and you see relevant humidity. So temperature is very important for us. I'll explain in a minute. Humidity is to make sure that it's not in a, um, that humidity is not penetrating the product. It's for us. It's to uh, figure out if there's any fault with the ceiling. And voltage is very important to make sure that the units are really charged. Mm -hmm. We should be able to identify issues before the product fails, which is very important to us. Because it's sending you information. Exactly. All the information collected here is sent to us and getting actually to our server, and I'll show you our server. Mm -hmm. So this is only to hide customer names, nothing else. But you can see it, each automatic fender has Mac ID. Mm -hmm. We monitor the temperature it is working at, relative humidity, voltage, whether it's port or starboard side, the distance of, of the travel. Yes, everything, mm -hmm. everything is captured here. I can show you that we can actually see each one of the sensors. You can see this is the voltage. Mm -hmm. This is the temperature. And you can see summer, it's getting warmer and warmer. And this is relevant, relative humidity. So we can monitor practically anything about the product. Let me show you the lab. Now it's for just marketing purposes. Uh, we already chose our motors. Um, motors break in because of two issues. One is basically load and they're turning around. The other braking mechanism, which is even worse, is when the motors stop. So what you can see here is we have a motor which is going from one end to the other and stopping abruptly. In order to make sure we have a very reliable product, we tested each and every motor type, both in this station and that station, and we made sure that we can do a few tens of thousands of cycles with each motor type before choosing that motor type. Mm -hmm. I'll take you to our uh, motor graveyard. Yes, so in order to choose the motor, we started by picking up motors, different sizes, and different technologies. There are basically th three technologies. There's the warm motors. You can see the warm inside. Mm -hmm. There are the spur motors. And the thing about warm motors, warm motors and spur motors is that the gear has one touching point between one gear and the next, there is one touching point. So what we did is we took different motors and ran them in cycles until they broke, and then we tested where are they breaking. And this way we decided, okay, we cannot use this motor, we cannot use, we cannot use, we cannot use. The next thing I would like to show you is our chambers. So uh, um, we are testing the product in two chambers. So the most difficult, scenario for the product is being in high heat, high humidity. So in this chamber, we have two products which are running 
75 degrees C, which is 165 Fahrenheit, and with humidity level of 99% or 95%. So we have a rubber? Yes. Okay. We are running two units here and monitoring them continuously. And then here we're running two units in endless loop of temperature cycles. What we do, we start at minus 25 C, which is minus 13 Fahrenheit, and go all the way again to 75 degrees C, which is again 167 Fahrenheit, in a continuous loop, and we test that the products are not breaking. Um, these are extreme conditions. Yeah, but you have to. Yeah, these are extreme conditions. We run, we run three-week cycles. We take the products out, analyze them, decide if improvements are needed. At this stage, this is for marketing purposes. We're done testing. Look at, look at the uh, plastic under the microscope. See how it's yes. fractured or yes. yeah, I mean, spider cracks, Everything. Anything. Everything. Yeah. Yes. And um, what you can see here, we're monitoring them. And beyond monitoring them here, all the information goes to the server. We bought quite a few marine products to make sure that we're doing things right. And, and the most relevant marine products to us are actually the spotlight and the radar because they have motors. Yes. You can see that they have motors. Mm -hmm. And what we found out is that many of the products are not sealed and are not conformal coated. In order to have a very reliable product, we are sealing our product. Our product is sealed, and there is conformal coating on each of the printed circuits. So that's a waterproofing uh, uh, yes. or a shrink uh, type coating? Yeah. So we have two layers of protection. One is the conformal coating on the PCB and all the connection, all the wires. And the second one is having a seal. Mm -hmm. If you look at other products, they don't have that. They do not have conformal coating, no. and they do not have a seal. So we are pretty sure that the product will last for very long. We tested the product in water, so the product can work underwater actually, and we tested it. So the it's first thing, it's sealed. it's sealed. The first thing we did, we put it in in this container, yeah. filled it up with water, checked that it's working. Then we took it to the river dipped it three feet, made sure it still works, and only then we started testing in the chamber. Well, that's around water, so can I? Yeah. What you can see here is the process of building the product. We built 20 high-pressure molds. The product is polycarbonate. We built 20 high-pressure molds. Injection molds? Injection molds. And we're assembling the product here. Um, all of it is done here in California, and you can see different stages of assembly, mm -hmm. all the way to the last station where an automatic fender is being created. Mm -hmm. When we're done assembling the automatic fenders, they are going to our wall, and we test them. And you can see here. an automatic fender ready for shipment. This one is tested, which is working on the next product. Will be installed Hello. here. Hello. The next product will be installed here and so on and so forth. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, this is our embedded station. This is where we develop the embedded software. Okay. Um, That's your department. That's my department, <laughs> right. And uh, this is actually bootloader station. Here we put the bootloader into each one of the printed circuits. Um, after having the bootloader on the printed circuits, everything can be downloaded over the air. So if we need to change the embedded software, if we need to change the software in the automatic fender, it's done wirelessly. I do not need to take the product and disassemble and connect the connector, nothing. Everything 
It's done automatically. Well, there's an upgrade or a change or something. Everything automatically. Um, and then you can see different stations. Um, I'll show you this software. So um, you've seen our customer software. We also have an internal software. And what you can see in the internal software is in the internal software, we can control each and every parameter. So before the shipping the product, we test current consumption in idle, current consumption when it's connected to Bluetooth, current consumption when uh, the, the deploy motor moves, the lift motor moves, everything, everything, everything is monitored. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. This is an oscilloscope. Yep. And um, at this point, it's for marketing purposes, but originally, this was to make sure we know how to stop the motors in a timely manner. So what you can see right now is the motor is going down. You'll see it going down, the, the, the handle, yep. it starts going down. There's some current consumption, but whenever it reaches the end, stop. you see significant current consumption. Mm -hmm. We recognize the current consumption and stop. So when the fender is going up, uh, it has a magnet, and if the magnet is reached the top, is reached the sensor, the motor will stop. But if it gets stuck someplace, we recognize high current consumption, and because we recognize high current consumption, we take it down and up, down and up, down and up until it's released or it can go all the way, until it can go all the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs>